The After Effects 2025 update is finally here and it's about to kill every other 3D software. Watch out Blender. All jokes aside, the new update has some cool new features. By the way, you can get all our project files on Patreon in the description down below. This way you're really supporting the channel, plus it comes with a lot of cool extras. You can use all the project commercially and personal, so go ahead, check it out down below. With the older After Effects version, we could already import GLB or object files. However, it sucked. But with the new update, it's better than ever. Let me show you starting with the basics and ending with the best feature at the end of the video. I have this cool liquid After Effects 3D can. And to add it in After Effects, it needs to be an object object or GLB file. You'll find dozens of these models online. But you can also use 3D software to change formats. But my can is already in the right format, so I can just drag it into the project panel. From there, I can add it to my timeline. In this timeline, I already have two solid layers, which I made 3D and positioned them like a backdrop, creating a sort of product shot. Of course, I also have a simple 3D camera in there. But most importantly, I have my cool 3D can. I can move it around, place it wherever I want, which is all working pretty smooth. I can move my camera around with the three dedicated camera tools found in the toolbar on top. Or I can just use the Alt key, hold it down and use it together with the left, right and middle mouse button to navigate just like in real 3D software. Okay, now we can navigate. Let's add some lights. We have the parallel light, spotlight, ambient light or a point light. These lights may look good on the 3D model, but they won't cast any shadows. So we won't be using these. The light we want is the environment light. This has the possibility to enable the cast shadow option. But what's even better, you can feed the environment light a HDR iPhoto. This is a 360 degree image of an environment or light setup with the lightning and background purposes. You can find dozens of them on the internet for free, making our light setup instantly better and easier than ever. Now sometimes you don't have an HDRI because you're using stock footage, but you can easily fake an HDRI by taking a frame of your clip and feeding it Photoshop. Then you just have to save it as a radiance file or in other words an HDRI. Now the last thing I want to say about the light, you can find all the light properties back in the properties panel. Just select the light and navigate to the panel. This is the same for your camera layer. Again, visible in your properties panel. Okay, now let's tackle the shadow. As you can see, my solid layer accepts shadows, making them visible. Now with the new update, we can create a shadow catcher, meaning a layer that only displays the shadow it's catching. To enable that, we just have to open the properties of the solid layer and go to the material options. Here we'll find different shadow options, but we need the accept shadow property. If we set this to only, we just get the shadow and nothing more. Super handy for working 3D objects into a scene, which I'll show you in a moment. But okay, for now I want my layer visible with the shadow, and personally I find the shadow not that smooth. However, I do have a fix for that. If I go to the 3D render dropdown, I have this renderer options button. If I hit that, I get a new pop-up window with all the settings I need to make my shadow better. I can increase the render quality, the smoothness and so on. Just keep in mind that this will slow down your PC a lot, so maybe keep this low until the end. And one more thing I would like to mention from this window is the casting box size. This lets me determine the area size in which shadows will be visible. This can come in handy with bigger 3D scenes. Okay, I think we've almost covered all the basics here. Let's step it up a notch and go to another 3D scene. But before we do that, I want to show you Storyblocks. They have a plugin for Premiere and After Effects. You can access all different types of 3D templates, text and animations, animated backgrounds and so on. Now besides these presets you can browse unlimited stock assets. Imagine you spend an entire day waiting for the golden hour just to realize you forgot your SD card at home. You can't drive back because otherwise the sun will be gone. Well you should have used Storyblocks. Just type in golden hour and boom. Endless results. Storyblocks' curated stock library has everything you need to create high quality video in one place. With over a million 4K and HD footage, templates, music, sound effects, images and more, you can download unlimited high quality assets for one predictable subscription cost. You can say goodbye to paperclip pricing. Enhance your social media videos by accessing exclusive Storyblocks label music tracks directly in TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Starblocks will keep you protected from copyright strikes so that you can focus on what actually matters. And that is creating. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head over to storyblocks.com slash After Effects Basics. And now, Janik is gonna show you 
some zombies. I have this creepy bridge shot and as Halloween is coming closer, let's make it even creepier by adding zombies. I found these animated zombie models on Mixamo, a huge library full of motion capture data, which you can all use with an Adobe subscription. So definitely check that out if you're interested in that. So I have my walking zombie model and my shot. The next thing I now need to do is a 3D camera track of my bridge shot. And if you want a detailed video on that, check out the link in the top corner. But okay, the shot is tracked. We have a 3D camera and a solid that's sticking perfectly to the street. Let's make that solid a little bit bigger so it's covering even more of the street. Then it's time to add our zombie. Now because we did a great job at tracking, our zombie will be standing on the street doing its thing, which is absolutely nothing. Because we need to enable the magic button. If I select my zombie layer and open up the layer properties, we can see the animation options. Under this we find a drop down menu where we can select our animations, giving my zombie instant movement, letting him walk over the street. Now like I showed you guys before, let's make our solid layer a shadow catcher, only showing the shadows of the zombie. And let's also add an environment light with a fake HGRI of my clip. And boom, this zombie shot is already looking a lot better. Now add some more zombies to make it even scarier. But with doing that, we come across a problem. The furthest zombie has the same focus as the closest zombie, but this is easily fixed. We just have to select all our layers and pre-compose them by right clicking on them and choosing pre-compose. Or I could just hit the short key, control shift C. This will combine every layer into a new package, a single layer. This new layer we will duplicate and rename it to 3D Depth. And on this we will add the 3D channel extract effect. This will examine everything inside the pre-comp layer and extract 3D data from it. As you can see we are getting a depth map. Everything white is close to the camera, black is further away. And this we can use for creating depth of field. First disable the depth layer making it not visible anymore. Then on our main layer we add the camera lens blur effect. In the effects control panel we go to the camera lens options and look for the blur map tab. Here we can adjust the layer to our 3D depth layer and also make sure you adjust the drop down next to it, changing it to effects and masks. This all will make sure we can blur our scene and zombies with the help of the depth map, making it all much more realistic. We can also add the 3D fog effect to our main comp and again use the depth map as reference. With this effect we can mimic the existing fog of our shot, combining everything beautifully together. Now we just need to add some more grading, some music, some sound effects and boom, it's ready for Halloween. Now if you can get enough of After Effects, check out the video here on my left and keep on learning. Thank you so much for watching, thank you Storyblocks for the support, see you next time.